Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutbid.com. Today we're going to take a look at creating this drop shadow for around your website. You can see it here on the Mystic Cloth site. Uh, this basically shadow runs the length of the site and it stops right here at the bottom. How do we create it? How do you create it? What do you do to get it started? Well, we're going to take a look at how exactly we can create that. We're going to hop over here to Adobe Dreamweaver and we're going to open up our index.html file. And actually, to preserve the index.html file, I'm going to close it. I'm going to duplicate the index.html file. Collapse my CSS panel here. To duplicate a file here in Dreamweaver, the hotkey is just Command or Control D. Just select it, Command or Control D. We have a copy of index. Um, we're going to leave it as copy of index and just double click it to open it. The first thing I want to do here is get rid of this dark blue background. We want to make it light gray like this. So, very easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to pop up the properties panel here. If you don't have that, it's just Window Properties. Command or Control F3 would be the hotkey. And we're going to choose Page Properties. So here under Page Properties, we're going to change our background color to the very lightest gray. Okay, that's six C's. Six of the letter C. That's the color we want. And we want there to be no background image. So I'm going to select that and delete it. And uh, just delete this whole repeat thing here. And hit OK. You can see we now have a nice light gray. All right, the next thing we want to do is check the width of our site. So what I'm going to do is select just here maybe this text. And down here in my code tree, I know that div or the div with the ID of a wrapper is what's setting the width of my site right now. So I'm going to select that, okay? You can see it's selecting here. It's giving me all these diagonal lines for all this margin space where I, you know, I'm centering the site using the margin. So what I'm going to do is hit this... Uh, edit CSS button. It's going to open up my CSS styles panel. I'm going to choose all and I'm going to double click on pound wrapper right here. Double click on that and we're going to come over here to the box category and we can see the width is 800. Alright, great. That gives me enough info to go over to Photoshop and get started working on a shadow. So what I'm going to do is go file, new, and we want to create a Photoshop document that is at least 800 wide. Really, we need it to be wider though because we want our shadow to show off the edges. So we're going to say 840 because we want there to be 20 pixels of shadow on either side. So 800 and 40 by, uh, let's say 200. We're actually going to cut it down even further later on, but just so we have room to work. So here we have 840. And now that we have this document open in Photoshop, one of the things I like to do is immediately fill this background layer. Here, if I open my layers panel, you can see the background layer here. The first thing I want to do is just fill that with the same color as the background of our site, which again is C, 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 C. Light gray, hit OK. Alt backspace, option delete on the Mac. There we go, we filled it. Great. I'm going to, uh, I'm actually going to uh, expand this dock here, collapse my adjustments panel, and open up my layers panel, creating new layer. All right, up on this new layer, we're going to grab our marquee tool. And we want it to be our rectangular marquee tool. We're going to set the style to fixed size. We want the width to be 800 and the height to be, you know, right around 150. So I'm just going to click out here and just drop it out there. Anywhere, it doesn't matter where you drop it. Now I'm going to hit the D key. That sets my foreground and background color back to their defaults and again fill this alt backspace or option delete and then command or control D to deselect that alright now that we have this box very nice we need it to center it though so we want to go select all and then come up here to layer align layers to selection horizontal centers right there alright very nice we don't need we don't need to be worried about the top and bottom alignment our shadow is just going to be on the sides alright so next up we're going to select this guy and we're going to go layer layer style Drop shadow, or not drop shadow, excuse me, outer glow. We're calling it a drop shadow, but we're actually going to be working with an outer glow. So that's layer, layer style, outer glow. And here we have our outer glow. We're going to set the blend mode to normal, and the color is going to be black. All right, very nice. We're going to up the opacity to 100%. And you can see it's difficult to see what we're working with because our square is black. So we're going to come here to the blending options, and we're going to reduce the fill opacity to zero. Very nice. We're actually going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to set my size to 20 pixels. Remember, this is, oh, we want to set it to 20. This does go all the way out to the edge now because remember, we gave ourselves 20 extra pixels on either side of that 800. So that's important to keep in mind. Even though it might not look like you're going 20, this is going to give us a perfect fade out to that gray. So 20 pixels as far as we want to go and the spread at 0%. What I want to do here, instead of reducing opacity, I just want to change to a lighter gray. It's going to give me that same effect like it looks like I'm reducing my opacity. But I'm just giving it a lighter gray to just make the effect a little more subtle. All right, there's a nice gray. That's 9E, 9E, 9E. Hit OK. Hit OK. And uh, basically what we would do at this point is you can save this PSD as your editable shadow if you like. But what I like to do is go Layer, Flatten Image, 
grab the crop tool and just cut a thin sliver right out of the center. All right, it doesn't need to be very big at all. We're just going to repeat this image over and over and over again. The smaller you can make it, the faster the loading time will be. So ideally one pixel. Uh, here I'm making it a little bit bigger so we can actually see the image. All right, once you do that, we're gonna go File, Save for Web and Devices. And when this dialog box pops up, here it is. What we're going to do is just save it as a JPEG. Uh, the quality, somewhere around 50. You can see it's gonna take about one second to load on a 56K connection. That's, that's very nice. And then we would just hit Save. Choose wherever you would like to save it on your hard drive and save it. I'm going to save it here as drop shad. Save, and then just close this. Do I want to save it? No, I'm not going to worry about saving. What I am going to do, however, is come over here to Adobe Dreamweaver, and we need to drag that image in. So, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do excuse me, is use my hotkey, that's Control-Alt-O, or Command-Option-O on the Mac, to open up Adobe Bridge. You can see here it is. And drop shad.jpg is the image I want. However, before I try dragging it over, I'm going to make sure I've got my files panel open. I'm just going to drag it right here into the images folder. Drop shad, drag that guy right over, drop it on the images folder. You can see there he is right there. Beautiful. Now we can start creating the HTML and CSS required to make this drop shadow happen. We have our image. Let's actually make it happen on the website. So what we want to do is, again, select that wrapper div, right? We're actually selecting the wrapper div. If I go to code view, maybe a little difficult for you to see, but I have div ID wrapper up here, and I'm selecting all the way down to the closing div, uh, div tag. All right, so I'm going to come back to design and just select it here from the code tree to ensure that I've got everything I need selected. What I'm going to do now is come up here to the common, I'm under the common tools, and just choose insert div tag. Now, the insert div tag dialog box gives you some insert options, wrap around selection before, after tag, after or before the end or start of the tag. We want to wrap this around the selection, so we're wrapping another div around our wrapper. And I'm going to give it the ID of shadow. Okay? And you can see it doesn't look like we did anything right now, but we're going to change that because we're going to create a CSS rule that targets this div. All right, there is a div wrapped around it, but again, it doesn't look like we did anything. Not yet, at least. I'm going to select layout.css here on my CSS styles. This is just an external CSS document I have. If you don't have an external CSS document, you may want to select uh, the style tag here. All right, it doesn't matter. Whatever way you do it, you just want to create a new CSS rule. All right, this is going to be a rule for just pound shadow. That's that ID we gave to that wrapper or the div that's wrapping our wrapper. And we're going to place it in a layout.css file. Hit OK. And right here, the first thing we want to do is change the box, the width, to 840. That's only as wide as we need it. All right, but watch what happens when we do that. I'm going to hit apply. You can see that our whole site moves out of center. The reason this is happening is because the centering method we used for our wrapper div centers based on the parent element. The parent element is just the element that holds the, you know, whatever element we're talking about. In this case, we're talking about the wrapper div. And we can see that it's being held by the shadow div. So the shadow div is not being centered, but look at this. Our wrapper div is being centered within that shadow div. You can see there's that 20 pixels of space on either side. That's good because that means our shadow is going to show up. The bad thing is our whole site is not centered. It's a quick fix, though. All we need to do is come over here into margin and set right to auto and left to auto. All right, I'm going to hit apply. And we can see that the whole thing is now centered. So what we just did was we centered our shadow to the actual web browser and our actual wrapper div is just centered to the inside of the shadow div. So now that we've done that, it's a matter of just placing that image, background image, we're going to say browse. We're going to choose site root to make sure we're working in the correct site. Double click images, choose drop shad, and I'm going to say repeat only along the Y and just hit OK. We can see that we now have a very nice shadow. I'm going to save this, command or control S, and I'm going to preview it. Now, you can see that we were also working with layout.css, so it's going to prompt me to save that. I'm going to hit F12. It's going to say, hey, some files need to be at, uh, saved. Would you like to save them? Yes, I want to save them, and let's check it out. So here we go. We can see that we have this very nice shadow, virtually identical to our other shadow, running on both sides of our web page. That is, uh, long story short, how you create just a simple drop shadow that wraps itself around your site using CSS and uh, one little image created in Photoshop. That's how you do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And uh, thank you very much for sticking around and watching. And please go check out the site. That's www.tutvid.com.